Hi, hi. This is um, Mark J. Aquaviva. Very happy to be back in my garden. <laughs> so, uh, yes, keeping it going with the uh, every Tuesday, Tuesday morning at 10.30. I'm thinking of expanding upon this because I'm, I'm really enjoying it and people seem to be getting a lot of benefit. So, um, so yes, I'll talk about that later. Um, last time... Uh, hi, hi, Kishori, nice to see you. Um, yeah, last time I, uh, because I, I spent a questions so that I have something to teach, because uh, I always respond to whoever's in front of me rather than um, arrive with my own agenda, if you, if you know what I mean. Um, uh, it, it took a little while to get started, so I, I thought I'd ask people beforehand if they could um, place comments on the um, below the um, pending Facebook Live, so that I was ready. And I have I have one here, which is great. It's from Kay Fair, Fairweather. Now I know she's in New Zealand, so um, I have no idea if you're actually if the time zones allow you to be here on time. Uh, for, for for the actual session live, but um, I think uh, it's quite a good it's quite a good co uh, question. Anyone else that turns up, please do, please do. Um, still practicing with legs and lower back. Okay, Kishori, great. Uh, well, lower back is actually uh, Kay's question. Uh, uh, put it up so you can read it with me. So. I believe mine is mainly due to hypermobility hyper and instability in my pelvis, but so many people experience lower back pain, and I suppose for many different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be interested in my thoughts uh, on this and how we can relieve rather than aggravate lower back pain during practice. Uh -huh. Yes, well, uh, thank you, Kay. That's a, that's a great question. So let's tune into this. And um, this doesn't mean this is the only question I'll take. Please, please, um, if you're watching, do say hi and let me know you're there. Um, and if you have any particular questions, do when I see it, I will do my best to answer. So, oh yes, we have, we have Black Cat here with us today. Um, taking up residence on my lap, like he likes to do. Um, yes, it's, uh, he's, he's, he's actually quite a pleasure for me. He, he's totally um, uh, codependent, I think is the word. He, he likes to, he likes to uh, be very close at all times. And whenever I sit down, he sits on my lap. So it makes it hard to get too serious. <laughs> so maybe that's what he's doing for me, who knows. Okay, so um, yes, lower back, let's see. So first I'm gonna tune into where I'm at and um, and then see what's relevant to this. I've had a little practice today, not much of one. And um, yes, I already had the area in my awareness. And actually on our training course this weekend in Brighton, we were looking at that area not directly but um in terms of breathing and and um well i'll say the word uh, uh, breathing centers and junctions between those areas along the front of the spine and um, the word of, i'm not quite saying is chakras um I, I i work with them but um not so much the idea of them, more the practical ramifications of what they might be. Um, they're obviously a somatic experience of sorts, and um, they, they, uh, your attention in these areas does make a great deal of difference to practice. Uh, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit wary of um, working with ideas that are not embodied. Because it's it's so easy to ah hi Kay you're not uh, okay not able to watch live again that's, that's a shame um, okay well uh, it, I'll I'll be looking at the lower the back stuff so it will be relevant to you um, 
it would be nice if you were practicing live with me. But uh, if that's not possible, then that's okay. Uh, maybe try, I don't know if you have a, an ethernet cable. Sometimes that solves the problem if, if the Wi-Fi is the issue. Okay. Um, so where was I? Yes, yeah, the, the back. Uh, when people say I have a back problem, <laughs> um, most people are talking about their lumbers. Not always, sometimes it's the upper back. Um, but uh, mostly what people are referring to is the lumbar curve. And of, of course, the lumbar curve is, is quite a long structure. So um, what, do, what do we mean by the back? Well, there's the there's the lower half, which is um, it's kind of good to have an idea of bones. I think um, I'm, I'm less fascinated with muscles, although um, it can it can be useful to be aware of what these what the straps are doing. But um, I'm, I'm more interested in bones and relationships between bones because um, it's the relationships that we want to resolve. And the thing that is the issue is the holding patterns, which is done with um, muscles. There's nothing wrong with muscles. They're, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, they're, they're supporting you. Uh, but there are... Mm, but uh, when those muscles engage for no purpose, because they're habitually used, then that is what most people would deem as tension. Um... And yes, I would as well. Um, you know, um, engagement of musculature that is unnecessary is a definition of tension. Um, so, yes, and, and in the West, we, we, we tend to, uh, you know, we go for a massage and what do they do? They, they dig their thumbs into the muscles to try and get them to relax. And um, take having the thumbs and fingers dug in there, elbows if you're lucky, <laughs> uh, gets you to notice tension and deliberately release it. So there is uh, this value in that. But that, uh, in terms of understanding how the body mechanics works, working yourself out in terms of the strapping that is around the structure can be a very confusing thing. Yes, <laughs> and it, unfortunately, it's the, it's the sort of center of how yoga is understood in the West. Uh, the, the anatomical mo model is based mostly on the musculature and agonist and antagonist sort of model. Uh, one muscle does this, the other muscle does that, which isn't true, by the way. Um, that's, not how, that's not how the body works. Um, <clears throat> they, they, might, they might be an agonist and antagonist in terms of... Uh, they work in opposite directions, but it, this is not how the body moves. Uh, that's how a robot might be designed to move. If you, that's how you think movement is organized. So uh, <clears throat> this is relevant because the thing that is being asked about is difficulty in the lumbar spine. And uh, the question was, how do I relieve rather than aggravate um, lower back pain or the lower back during practice? There's a very simple answer. Um, you practice in a way that doesn't create the problem. Now, it's a bit trite <laughs> in that um, easier said than done, but that is the answer. You might be under the impression that doing back bends um, creates lower back pain. No, it doesn't. Um, what creates lower back pain is you deciding to give the weight of your body to the muscles of the lower back once they try like crazy to sort of stabilize the lumbar spine. That's what gives you pain in back bend. Um, the back bend itself doesn't give you pain. It's the way we do things. So it, it is possible to move into extension without relying on this part of your spine carrying the weight. It is possible 
you know, people complain about lower back pain after doing forward bends. So um, I'll, I'll go on the mat for this. You can see more of me. So uh, I'm, I'm presuming everyone can hear me. I didn't. I didn't do my usual check. So if you're not hearing me, do send me a message. But um, yes. Uh, so if we're if we're thinking about muscles, we think. Uh, can you see me? Yeah. If you're thinking about the muscles around the bottom half of the lumbar spine, the the ones that you might get tense in the junction between. Spine. Um, uh, huh, you have back pain, okay? And lying on muscles to hold. Think, oh, I want to let that go. No, I want to stretch it. So then you. I uh, thank you, Kishori. Um, yeah, the point is, in principle, those muscles are not, their, their job is not to hold you up. Uh, the reason they are holding you up is because that's the job you give them. It's, uh, this, this is a very different way of looking at, at um, yoga, and well, it's a diff different way of looking at body work. We, we we tend we tend to treat the body as this machine that we control that this thinking thing controls, and it doesn't. Uh, the 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 body has an immense intelligence that has been developing um, over millennia, and it was developing long before we gained cognitive abilities. And it was developing to do incredibly intricate things. And um, this, this approach that we have in the last 100 years or so of controlling the body, maybe, maybe it's been there for a while, I don't know. Um, you, you might think, think that if you read the translations of the various yoga texts, it talks about control. I personally think this is a mistranslation um, or a misinterpretation of the word. Uh, the, the control I think we need to talk about is is the control of a um, of a surfer. You know, on, on, you, you don't control the waves, or you don't control your reactions. What you do is you stay steadily in presence to the nature of what is going on, and in that presence, in that totality of presence to what is going on in your environment, which includes the breath, which includes the body's responses, you get to refine your responses, your reactions, not control them. You get to find the nature of what you're doing. And the nature is very simple. You don't want to fall off. <laughs> you, you want to feel free to breathe. You want to feel supported. And you want to feel free to stay where you are in space as things occur. And the way to do that is just like Black Cat just did. You enjoy it. You enjoy your touch. You enjoy the sunshine. You enjoy the breath. That's the way to do it. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm going a little bit off topic. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, these muscles. Um, in the West, we've we've sort of we're treating the body like a machine, and we're treating muscles like they go wrong. They don't. They 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 do precisely what you ask them to do. And if you organize your structure in space in such a way that those muscles are asked to carry weight, then that's what they will do. So um, if you get tired of doing that, then by all means do something. It allows you to let go of that tension. And that's the, that's the, um, the paradigm of, of uh, the, the yoga practice that is um, inhale up. And you use these muscles, and, and you inhale up, and then you ex, and they get tight, so you exhale down, 
and you exhale down, you can let them go. What goes wrong with that is people think then that these muscles need to be stretched. That's a support system. If you want to, if you decide to stretch them, you will probably succeed because the body will, the, the body will, what's the saying? Yes, if, if you decide to stretch them, these muscles that are holding you up, that you spend all day using to hold you up because that's the way you organize structure, um, by all means do the other thing, that means you don't have to use them to hold you up release the breath and all that sort of thing, release tension. But if you then decide to stretch these muscles and the tendons and the connective tissue, the myofascia that is wrapped around this stuff, that is built to support you, what you're doing is you're stretching the very thing that supports you. The muscles will have to, will get longer because the connective tissue around them will be stretched. And it's, a, it's like plasticine, um, you know, you, you can change length of things um, but once it's longer those poor muscles will have to work twice as hard to hold you up if that's how you decide to support yourself okay so uh, I'm wanting to turn the whole idea of how to work with the body on its head we've got it wrong uh, I'm sorry to say this we've got it wrong it's not about doing stuff to the body These, these things that complain because of are telling you something. <laughs> they're, they're, t they're telling you that you're doing things in a way that causes them to overwork, to causes them to strain, causes them to pull. And, uh, and you get tired of that, so you do the op opposite to them, and then you stretch them, and then they have to work even harder to do the same thing. Yes. It's a, it is a Cohen. It is a Cohen. Yes. Yes, indeed. Back to what I like to work with in terms of um, physiological understanding of how to deal with the body. Um, muscles are telling you stuff, but you don't do stuff to the muscles. What you do is you understand that the muscles are the relationship between structures. Start with that. Okay. So, if a muscle or the thing that is complaining, the, the difficulty, the ache, the pain, whatever it is, um, if it's complaining, it's complaining because it's given a job it doesn't want to do. What you need to do is to treat the body. If you want to understand how to change the, uh, the relationships, these relationships that are being expressed by musculature, um, you need to understand the body in terms of bones, structure, bones, these things that um, support us. These things that, um, let, let's move this so you can see me because it's a bit over bright. Hang on. Yes, you, you need to understand the, 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 the body in terms of bones and the spaces between them, structures and the spaces between them, because that's what it is. That's what uh, muscles are, really. It's, it, they're, they're basically fluid um, with a bit of connective tissue wrapped around them. And... Um, if you if you want to release tension, uh, I'm going to take this off so you can see what I'm doing. Um, if you want to release tension in the spine, then you need to not hold yourself up with the spine. If you hold yourself up with the spine, then okay, the spine will get strong at holding you up, but it won't be supported itself. So the muscles around the spine will be responsible for that support. The, and going back to your question, Kay, the, how do I practice in a way, how do I practice in a way that doesn't aggravate the back, the lumbers? Well, you practice in a way that doesn't aggra aggravate the lumbers. How do we do that? Okay. Let, let's, let's try a, a simple thing. If you uh, want to join me, how am I doing for time? Let's see. Oh, I've only got 10 minutes. So do talk, don't I? 
<laughs> okay, let, let's see. Uh, one leg forwards, one foot, one, one foot forwards, one foot back, and uh, that just gives us something a bit asymmetrical to do, and because life is asymmetrical, um, we're going to do play with a forward bend, and we're going to play with extending and coming up. Okay, and I, what I'd like you to do is to have a hand on the back of the waist. And whichever part of the back of the waist you think of as your back, you know, the bit that complains, um, that's where you need your touch to be, okay? And the job, and, and on the front as well, the, the soft stuff in, in the front, and the job is to tune into how do I breathe? How does the breath move in this fluid space? You know, obviously air is not going in there, but there, is, there are movements of pressure that are the arrival of the breath as lungs fill. It needs to be able to be felt in this space. If it's not, it's because you're holding yourself up. Perhaps you feel it in the front. If you feel it in the front, it's because your back is holding you up. Perhaps you feel it in the back. If you feel it in the back, it's your front that is holding you down, actually. Okay? So you need to be able to feel the breath all the way around here, this 360 degrees of this space that contains this fluid spine. So how do you find that? It's a position in space, because if you're busy pulling your knees up and standing up and holding yourself up, you won't feel it, because the muscles are doing the job you're asking them to do. So you find a position in space where, where bending the knees is quite good for softening the lumbar spine, especially the sacral end. Um, letting the solar plexus empty is kind of good for allowing the upper part of the lumbar spine to release. Um, uh, when you, when you um, yes, when you find those things, you can get a sense of the breath arriving from your feet behind you across the base of the spine to fill the pelvis. You can get a sense of the breath arriving from the space behind your heart broadening across the kidneys and into this space, but uh, not to push it forwards. Yeah? It's a fluid space. And if you can center the expansion and release of pressure in this space, you will feel it in your hands. You'll feel it in both hands. The ones at the back will be broadened. The hand at the back will be broadened by your inhale. And the, as, as as much as the space across the belly on the inner side. And the release of the breath will be, instead of it being a collapse of weight in one direction or another, it'll be a release of tension, a release of pressure towards the center of this 360 degree space. The result is a throughness. It's a throughness of the spine that doesn't rely on the spine itself to do the carrying. There are still muscles. There are still muscles. Of course there are muscles. Muscles are needed to breathe. But it's not a lifting and holding up, nor is it a hanging off the muscles. Both of those things cause stress for the lumbar spine. So if you can find a way of concentrically allowing the movements of breathing to arrive, you have to relax the pelvic floor to get the breath in the lower half. You have to broaden and relax across the kidneys to get the breath in the upper half of the belly. If you want to get it centered between navel and the center of the lumbar spine, then the release of the breath as it empties back to that central place can be supported by the touch of the feet. When the touch of the feet supports that central release, the spine isn't busy carrying your weight, which means it is free to flow, to fly through its axis, you see. Makes movement look very simple. So that's in forward bend. What about back bend? Well, yes, you can lean against the muscles and all this stuff will fall forwards and out and it's a waste of energy. It's a waste of your core energy. If you keep this central space breathing, 360, and then as you release the breath back to the center from all directions, the central space, still released but above and below, there'll be a gathering in towards that central place from which 
you're still anchored to the ground, but from which everything above, from the heart up, can fly with no pressure on the lumbar spine. I'm still allowing extension in the same way I was allowing flexion before. But instead of it being a leaning against my spine, relying on it to carry my weight, there is a breathing action that centers in here. And when it releases, there's a release of pressure to the center that goes with putting the feet down. And when that happens, I have true central core support, not core tension, core support from which I'm anchored, from which if I allow the breath to be something celebratory that happens across the heart, if I allow the breath to arrive in a way that supports the weight of my head behind me, the side of me, then when I release the breath back in here through the center, I land on my feet and from that anchoring, I can fly. And there's no pressure on this place. I'm allowed to extend, but most of the extension it feels, I'm, I'm sure it's not true, but it feels like it's mostly the heart releasing open from which all limbs can fly, you see? Um, say with twists, it's not different. Um, it's about listening to the body, it's about listening to the spine, and not really being interested in the achievement of the posture, although achieving the posture is part of the shape of things, if you like. Um, not, not a necessary part. It does sort of seal the deal a bit. Um, but the interest is, you know, if, if you have an issue, how's my lower back feel? No, I want my lower back to be better. Um, you practice in a way that allows the lower back to breathe. And the whole body will be involved in that. The way you use the ground will be involved with that. The way you occupy space will be involved with that. So it's a, it's a relationship. The, the whole of the lumbar spine is a relationship between heaven and earth. That's what this space is. It's a breathing relationship between heaven and earth. So honor it, honor it in your practice with a view to seeing that once you've created that condition of honoring, can you move into the posture, an expression of support from the earth, from the heavens, between, and you, you're in the middle breathing, can you move into the posture as an exp expression of that freedom and that central support? Not, can you move away from that condition of integration to make a shape? It will make the posture harder to find, but the achievement of the posture will then come from other integrations, from the rest of the body releasing into an integrous state in relationship to the thing you were interested in looking after. Might seem a bit convoluted for those of you that enjoy just going through your paces and doing the postures and then relaxing at the end. But what this does is, what, what this does for you is, is in 10 minutes, in 10 minutes, you change a habit of a lifetime. And you, you, you get to at least experience what it means to not have this thing that you think is happening to your body. It's not. It's happening because of what you ch choose to do in space and how you choose to do it. Okay. I find, I find this idea of uh, this way of looking at the body um, totally empowering. As some people find it um, a bit much. They, they would rather just get on with their exercises and, um, and then feel better and then get on with their lives. And, Okay, okay, that's, that's, um, that's perfectly reasonable. But um, if, you, if you dare to take some of these relationships into, into your practice, I guarantee you will find yourself taking them and taking them into life. And then you'll find that your relationship to life starts to become kinder, I suppose. And you, you start to become more centered in the space that you occupy.
it, it, yoga becomes something that happens off the mat. Mm. Great. Um, okay, so that's that's me. That's my half hour. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Uh, I just want to. I need to mention a couple of things I've got coming up. Uh, I'm up in Scotland this weekend, so that means Friday in Glasgow at the uh, at In the Moment Centre. That is um, yes, in Glasgow. It's near near the uh, the main library. If you want to join me there, it's 11 to uh, 4 p.m. and uh, I call it joint clinic, so people can bring bring um, whatever they choose to bring to the class. Uh, I mean, it's not actually different from any other format, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it's to allow people that feel broken and not able to do yoga to come because actually this work. Um, it's available to anyone, anyone in any state, to be honest. So, um, yes, do come along to that, 11 till 4 p.m., and bring, bring an issue, and I'll use it to show you how the yoga works. That's in Glasgow. Uh, what else? Um, I had it written down here somewhere. Oh, here we go. That's 16th of June, Friday. Um, and then uh, the following weekend in Red Hill, I'm, I'm, I'm in Red Hill, um, thanks, Alan. Nice, nice to see you, mate. Um, I'm in Red Hill, which is in Surrey. I'm doing two two workshops, morning and afternoon, two groups. But you you can book for both. Um, thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Kishori. Lovely to see you both. Um, yes, Red Hill next Saturday, twenty fourth of June. Open workshops, uh, and it's not like I say, it's not dissimilar. Um, you can come along with any anything, you don't, uh, and it's for anyone, uh, whether you've been doing yoga for five minutes or or 50 years, it makes no difference. We're all in the same boat. We're all here to improve our quality of life, and that's what I hope to offer. That's on the Saturday. On Sunday, I'm in Twickenham. Uh, similar workshop, so well, it's a, it's a one-day workshop. That's a regular group, and I call that um, Yoga of Relationships, because that's the person that, Tuesday McNeil, that um, I work with. Oh yes, uh, I'm, I'm running a yoga holiday with her in July, if you want to come along. Um, but uh, yes, on the Sunday, 25th of June, I'm in Twickenham. On the same day, if you get a chance, uh, if, if you're a woman and you have a pelvis, go and work with Abigail. She's in London in, at um, Ada Street, uh, uh, Broadwater Market, is it? Um, it it's, uh, it's the East End. Um, that's on the website as well. Uh, she, she's doing a pelvic health workshop, and it's women only. You you got you got to try it out if you if uh, she she's uh, done some amazing stuff with the these principles and uh, brought it directly to women's health and uh, she's actually inspired me to think of doing some something for men along the similar lines. Um, what else going on? Oh yes, uh, I think there's a place or two. Not sure, but I think there's a place or two on our amazing retreat in Italy. Uh, 2nd to 9th of September at, uh, up in the hills and in Sabina and we're, we have one of my um, most significant teachers uh, Diane Long coming coming along midweek to share her her stuff with um, our students so uh, get yeah so what's that um, that's about it or you can come and visit us at the uh, in July uh, 8th and 9th we're, we're at the Brighton Festival come Come and say hi, and uh, I might be doing some one to ones and uh, that sort of thing there. Okay, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching, and and if you're still watching, thank you for listening to my <laughs> uh, blurb. Oh, uh, I've got I've got all sorts of plans. I, I won't I won't bore you with them now. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so plenty of plans afoot to spread this work worldwide. And uh, so, if you get a chance to, if you if you can think of anywhere to place this, or anywhere that, we, that you think it might be appropriate to share this on a group or a page or someone's timeline, do please share this this video. Um, yes, uh, you'll be helping me, helping me spread this work, and that's what it, that's all I'm here for, really. So, yes, I am Mark J Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. It has been a total pleasure. Namaste. Thank you. I'll see you next time. <laughs> if I can switch the thing off. <laughs> okay. Uh.
and there we go. Bye.